Good morning, Overflow and Internet World. My name is Josh Balog, and I'm going to give the devotion for today, and that is this. Uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail. I want you guys to say with me this phrase, and even yell it if you're in a place where that would be appropriate, or maybe even if it's inappropriate, but say this. Hell cannot stand against the great I am. Hell cannot stand against the great I am. Uh, believer, son or daughter of the king, I want to remind you as I was reminded this morning with my coffee in Jesus, as he filled me up and reminded me who I, who I am in Christ. Remember who you are. Remember. I think of that scene from The Lion King when Simba is hearing his dad in the cloud and he's telling him and reminding him to remember who he is. Remember who he belongs to. Believer, son or daughter of the king, you wear his robe. You wear his ring. And what does that mean? You wear his robe of righteousness. You wear his ring and that bears the authority of his name. We have that as sons and daughters of the king. And that gives us every right and every privilege of the one who has already done the work, who has already finished it all, who has already won the battle. And that is why the gates of hell cannot prevail. That is why hell cannot stand against the great I am. And believer, the great I am dwells within us. Think about that for a minute. The great I am dwells with us always. We wear his robe. We wear his ring. We carry his authority. We have already won. We're on the winning team. So I don't know if you are like me sometimes and I approach life from the defeatist angle of, man, what is today going to bring? Is it, it bad things come in threes? What's next? When's the other shoe going to drop? No, we've got to put away that type of thinking and we have to remember who we are and remember what he's done. We don't have to do anything but rest in the fact that he's already done it. It's begun with his done and then we are able to do because of who lives in us. We bear his name. We bear his image. We wear his robe. We wear his ring. If you need a reminder of who you are, go look back in Ephesians chapter 1. And it says these things about us. It says um, that we are chosen, that we are blessed, that we are forgiven, that we are holy, that we are blameless, that we are loved, that we are adopted, we are favored, redeemed, and we are sealed, meaning we are his and nothing can snatch us away. Say that over yourself right now. I am chosen. Use your name. I am blessed. Josh, you are forgiven. You are holy. You are blameless. You are loved. You are adopted. You are favored. You are forgiven. You are redeemed and you are sealed. So what does that mean? If we believe that and it's true, we should walk with confidence, bold confidence, beginning from our seated place of rest in what Christ has done. We are these things so we can walk in confidence. We bear the light of Christ. So as we grow, we can glow and attract attention, not to us, but to Christ in us. We can walk with confidence to the places that he asks us to go. The gates of hell cannot stand against the great I am who lives in us as we boldly declare the things that he's already said in his word, these things that we are. We are fully able and capable to do the things that he's asked us to do. Believer, rest with that thought. Dwell on that. Let that soak deep into your spirit. You can walk in confidence because of who you are with. It's the idea of going to a concert or a club or someplace where you don't have a ticket, but you're with the owner. And he says, I'm with him. That gives you access. That gives you right. That gives you authority to be there. We're with him. Awesome. We're royalty, so we have authority, not our own authority, not our own power, not our own strength, not our own abilities, but Christ in us, the hope of glory. So remember who you are. Walk in confidence, not just a self-made confidence, but confidence in who you belong to and what he's given to you, what he's already done. And then lastly, take the light 
to the fight. I know it's very rhymy, this is very uh, preachery of me, uh, but it helps me remember. Take the light to the fight. So if the light of Christ is in you, wherever you go, right? That's your mission field. You're taking the light to the fight. Walk with confidence. We can walk with confidence when we don't go to the fight naked. Put on the armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and following. It talks about all the armor. Um, when we put that on, uh, can you imagine if we're at the front lines of the battle, standing against the gates of hell so it doesn't advance, standing on the wall, and then our friend walks up and we can see that they have no armor. We're going to be like, dude, go get your armor on. You're exposed. You are going to be in trouble. We need you armored up. Believer, we walk in confidence after we remember who we are and we cannot fight without the armor of God covering us. We walk in confidence because of who he is in us, what he's done for us, and we just have to access the gifts that he's given us. Don't go to the fight naked. Be ready to glow so you, be ready to grow in your faith in Christ so you can uh, gr glow, attract uh, people's attention, not to you, but Christ in you. And then be ready as you're glowing uh, to instead of just speak against the darkness over there as if it has nothing to do with you, Take your friends with you, missional community, and go into the darkness and pull out those that Christ wants. Because believer, it says in Ephesians chapter 6 that we don't fight against flesh and blood. That's not our enemy. Our enemy is the principalities, the spirit world that we uh, are fighting against. And so that means there's no human who is literally your enemy. And I know in these divided times, sometimes it feels like it. Republican, Democrat, Jew, Muslim, black, white. It feels like we have earthly enemies, but we're not fighting against humans or people. Those are all creations of the Most High. They all bear His image. They're not our enemies, but the unseen spirit world is. So as we remember who we are, as we walk in confidence because of what He's given us and what He's put in us, and as we take the light to the fight, we go together into the darkness and we pull them out in the name of Jesus and in the power of Jesus. There is no enemy, human enemy, that we have. Missional communities. When is it time to birth into multiple groups? When is it time to start one? If you feel this holy passion, this, this righteous anger about some evil or some uh, injustice that you see in the world, I think that's the first inkling that you need to start something like a missional community and find others who also share that passion and that righteous anger over injustice. And then go and take the light to the fight as you're armored up. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Remember who you are, believer. You are so loved. You are so cherished. You are blessed and favored. We are sons and daughters of the king. We wear his robe. We wear his ring. We carry his authority. Take that light to the fight. Go together. Go armored up. Stand on the wall for the next generation. Stand on the wall for your generation. Let's leave a legacy of those who are radically um, willing to sacrifice in order to see others come to Christ, because it is not his will that any should perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. We should be motivated by that same love, the heart of the Father, that none should perish. Remember who you are. Walk in confidence in the light and take the light to the fight. And remember the four things we're talking about. That's all got to start in your intimacy with God. So you got to be with him first. That is the first and most foundational thing that you can do. You have to know how to sit with him and to receive from him and how to speak to him just openly and honestly as a son would to his father or a daughter to her father. We need to share. What is Christ doing in you? What is he doing for you? Share that. There's nothing uh, less threatening than just sharing what God is doing in us. That takes the sting and the pressure out of evangelism. We just share the ways that God is blessing us with those that are around us. We share the things that he's given us. Our homes aren't just a refuge, but they're a resource for others to be restored to Christ, for others to be brought into relationship with him. We can give our, our time, we can give our money, 
that would be the give. We want to give. We want to give of our time, of our resources, of our money, of our abilities, uh, of our prayers, and then go. Where is it, again, where is it that that righteous anger or that passionate indignation that something is not happening uh, in the world that needs to happen, that a right that a wrong needs to be made right. It may be that you see it because you're the only one that does see it and you're the one that needs to start it and that's gonna inspire somebody else to join you. So lean into that. Believer, so you are loved. as one loved and believe who you are in Christ. He's given you all that you need to do all that he's asked you to do. So take that and be a blessing to the world. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you soon.